Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 59th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Mighty Morphin Mutants. We start this episode once again at Angel Grove High where Tommy is rushing to his locker, digging out his books, and he starts to run towards Miss Appleby's class. He runs into Kim along the way and he forgets to close his locker door so she does it for him. Tommy sneaks into class and Miss Appleby calls him out for being late. God. Damn it! this one's gonna be all about Tommy again, huh? Their assignment is to ask their friends what their flaw is, and then try to change it. That's the most demoralizing assignment I've ever heard! Bulk and Skull ask what to do if they're already perfect, and Tommy offers to help them, and Bulk says, you'll be lucky if you remember what the assignment is. And I have to admit, I actually like Bulk for once. On the moon, Rita says that she wants to target the Green Ranger's weakness, and she says to go get the badges of darkness out of the back or whatever, so they can send down evil rangers. It's so casually just glossed over. Tommy and Jason train at the juice bar, and Jason notices that he's way better than Tommy, so he asks what's up. Tommy tells him about this assignment while he uses Jason's water bottle because he forgot his, and then he borrows a towel because he forgot his, and Jason says, uh, you really want to know? Before he tells him that he's forgetful. Later, Tommy discusses how this might not be the case with Trini and Kim while he forgets his drink at the bar. It's so dumb, but I kind of like it. Kim and Trini offer to help him with the assignment. But that's enough of this B-plot BS because now, Goldar is on the beach training putties which he calls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Number 6 also sucks, which Goldar says he's going to turn into a clay pot eventually if need be, and number 6 quivers while Goldar sends him away. That's disturbing. The putties take badges of darkness, and as Goldar says, it's mutant time. They transform into the twins of the rangers. Hulk and Skull show up to make fun of Tommy, and Trini tells them that they're rude and obnoxious. And then they say they're fine with who they are. And Tommy points out that they'll get an F on the assignment. Kim and Tommy leave to walk through the park, and they run into the green and pink mutant rangers, which Tommy says that they don't necessarily need to morph for, because they need to see what they've got. Honestly, like I don't really care, because I love this. Jason David Frank is such a damn good martial artist and Amy Jo Johnson has really grown to become one throughout this show. Mutant Rangers disappear and Kim points out that Rita has made evil Rangers again. Good continuity. But I kind of wish Tommy was like, wait, what? Because he definitely wasn't around for that. They meet up with the others at the command center and they get caught up on everything. Also, Alpha says that this makes his tubes tremble somehow. Back at the youth center, Billy gives Tommy a device to help him remember things. Then, at the command center, Zorna asks Alpha when this crayfish monster appeared, and Alpha says, only two minutes ago. That means that Alpha had mm, 120 seconds to say something, and he just didn't. Zorna assumes this will be the leader of the mutant rangers, so they need to let the rangers know. At school, Kim ties a ribbon around Tommy's wrist because her grandmother says it works. Hope this is the same grandmother whose spinning wheel bulk broke, then got turned into a Monster. Oh, and Billy's device goes haywire. Tommy forgot his homework at home after Trini spent all that time reorganizing his notebook off screen, and he leaves with his communicator in his locker. The rangers hear from Zordon, and he tells them to morph to the shoreline to stop the monsters and the mutant rangers before they head into land, so they do. Also, it's mutant time! I will say the mutant rangers are just the same actors doing evil voices, and it's kinda great. There's a cool clone fight on the rocks with Jason taking on Commander Crayfish. Tommy rushes to his locker to find his communicator, and he gets updated and morphs to the shoreline, helping out Jason before the Green Ranger clone shows up. And the Green Ranger is wielding the Sword of Darkness, which is a nice touch. The mutant rangers put their gray weapons together to form their own power blaster, and they fire at the rangers, which causes the real rangers to retreat to the command. Center. Then Zordon says that they need new and more powerful weapons, which they get, and it's literally the exact same weapons. Alpha says, trust me, they're like new or whatever, and they're back to the shoreline. What kind of lazy ass writing? There's a badass mutant versus real ranger fight in a quarry. The mutants form their own power blaster as the real rangers do, which kills the pink and yellow mutant rangers only for some reason. Rita makes Commander Crayfish grow, as well as the green, blue, and black mutant rangers. The Rear Rangers call out their dinosaurs right away and form the Megazord while Tommy calls out the Dragonzord. The two fight the monsters and it makes me wonder why Rita has never made any putties grow before, since that's pretty much what she just did. The three mutant rangers end up working together to lift Commander Crayfish up on their shoulders for absolutely no reason, and Billy says that he's now out of range from their blaster. I mean, couldn't they just fire at the mutant rangers instead then? I don't really see the issue. This all makes no sense, so the rangers just call out the Ultra Zord and kill them all. 
Thank God someone put an end to that nonsensical fight. At school, Tommy, Trini, and Kim walk in and meet up with the others, and Tommy laments how he isn't different than before. And Zack says that his real friends will accept him for who he is. I feel like that should have been the lesson all along. Oh, and Bulk and Skull show up dressed up as Edwardian gentlemen, and they give a gift to Miss Appleby, who insists that they open it. They do, and it's a bunch of silly string that fires out. Why would they give that to her? This episode's pretty awesome, to be honest. But it also is once again all about Tommy. I don't know why the writers kept seeing the ZO2 footage as, well, this has to be Tommy focused too, I guess. Just because he wasn't around for the start of the battle? I have to say that I do appreciate them giving him some different things to keep him out of the fights. But when the entire plot revolves around Tommy, I honestly just couldn't care less. The Mutant Rangers are really cool, and I like the fact that they made the effort to have Kim and Tommy fight them unmorphed before we got the morphed footage. It was just super well done. How will next time fare as we enter the season finale of the first season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Find out then, but until then, may the power protect you.